So um, I don't know what you guys are here for, but I'm here for dialogic dialogue, which is kind of a vague concept that's still kind of new to me. But it's sort of about connecting as humans and then being impacted by each other as we share our truths. So I, I get the sense that this is a... Uh, this is more of a practice than uh, practice than presentation, which is well aligned with how I like to do things. So let's just jump in here with some uh, with the form of introduction. And I'm going to ask you to think about something positive that happened uh, for you in the last week or so. And I'm going to ask you to share it with a one specific person. And then that specific person will um, will just give back a bit of a reflection of how they were impacted by um by what they heard from you and i'll i'll start by demonstrating uh so let's see i will share with claire um it's so funny i, I just started a new job so i'm like my thoughts go back to like to like software engineering wins or how i i got wi-fi set up in the um in the country where i where i'm living now Actually, the, the most exciting thing that's happened to me is I set up a doggy door over there, and if you can see it. Um, so I basically picked, I picked a place to live based on, um, on my 10 month old puppy, Avon. And so I am now on a piece of, uh, a big piece of land, like nine acres with a couple of other families. And they have, there's another 14 month old dog. Um, that's just big enough that he can't get through that doggy door, but mine can. And, and I can actually have a co-working place where I can go to work and um, when I'm remote. And basically I have this like ideal situation for my puppy. <laughs> and he's out in nature, he has a buddy to play with, and I'm also out in nature. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like my, my new living arrangement for myself and especially for my puppy is what makes me happy. And Claire, now you get to uh, reflect back a few in a few words what you got from from that. Um, so two things. Just just as I was about to speak, the dog is looking outside, so he obviously knows we're talking about his his kind. Um, two things that I got from that was the curiosity about what a relationship with a dog can can do well what it does for you and um I guess yeah interested in in yeah how it feels to relate to an animal in that way because I don't know um and then the second thing that um kind of came out for me I, I guess these are these are curiosities and questions I don't know if that's um that's but but was you know how what does it feel like to be in this new situation where I'm, i don't know if you were in nature before but how is the environment impacted how you how you feel day to day um and then i guess that can interlink into the, the quality of you and your dog's relationship as well as just your individual relationship with your surroundings thank you and now it's Claire's turn to share something positive. So just pick someone else in the in the room, and uh, and we'll keep it going. Um. So Chuck, I can share with you. Um. So I've been traveling for the last two months in Sri Lanka. I quit my job because I didn't want to do it online, and I kind of lost a lot of magic from it. Um, and so decided to take the opportunity to start to move into different spaces. Um, and it's been quite a turbulent, difficult time because I loved my job a lot. And so it felt like a big deal to leave it. I left my master's, I left my house, everything, and, and came here just to get a bit of space. And what's been really nice today in particular is the first time I felt kind of calm which is ridiculous thing as I'm in paradise but um and what's what's felt really nice is that uh this conference combined with a yoga retreat that I've just started today feels like exactly where I should be at 
And I think what feels so great about it is something that I'm doing for myself, like my own self care, um, the yoga feels very, very connected to um, how I can start to explore how to help other people. Um, and that is, you know, I want to work with kids in movement, in nature, and climate activism. So all of these conversations are really resonating with me, as well as like kind of having this own my own physical embodiment of 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 a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. So yeah, sorry, that was quite a it's a big one because it's been a kind of big day for me to start to feel like okay, maybe I know what I'm doing, and maybe I'm stop being anxious. And, so yeah, it's been really great. Well, my, uh, my first reflection is uh, joy. I just saw uh, joy being interwoven through everything you were uh, talking about uh, from the leaving, the leaving, uh, the the, the current sense of calm, um, how the day seems to be interweaving um, into a, a strong sense of belonging for you. Um, and uh, I, I noticed the juxtaposition of your calm with wanting to work on movement. Yeah, so those are the things that came up for me. And just to reflect a little bit on um, kind of maybe qualities of closeness or, or dialogue, you dialogue, if I, with, with your permission, um, I heard a bit of concern from Claire that maybe she was going on too long. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, so that's um, a lot of, I've I've been basically sitting in groups like this for for you know twelve years you know, and there's a lot of um, nuance to like what makes a good group, what makes quality connection between both one on one and and the group. So I think I, first of all I want to honor your sensitivity that maybe there is such a thing as going too long. I think we've all been in groups where people don't have that sensitivity, right? <laughs> and is um, and maybe I'll actually introduce the the four. Uh, the four agreements that I sometimes use, but one of those agreements is consider group health. So I think what you were doing in that moment is considering the group health, am I taking up like too much time, right? And one of the reasons why I use this specific exercise where you're sharing with one person is why, right? Well, because you're guaranteed that at least one person is kind of like deeply tuned in. And if you're actually making some, you know, Zoom eye contact with them, you can kind of be guaranteed that you'll you'll sense a little bit when they're checking out. So um, so there's the self-correcting there's a self-correcting mechanism whenever you're talking to another human being, as long as you're kind of like allowing for some feedback into the into the space, and you you weren't even close to speaking for too long. Yeah. Any any thoughts on reflections on on that reflection of mine? Cool. Um, you, uh, well, so Chuck, I, 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 well, first of all, I, I appreciated your reflections. I've also been involved in a lot of dialogic conversations, and <laughs> and I've never seen this approach, just to speaking to one person. I mean, I've seen the breakout groups, you know, and triads and dyads, but to be in the group and just speaking to one person. So, thank you. Cool. Uh, for for I guess completeness, I. Uh, so I, I lived in Boulder, Colorado for, for a couple of years, and um, I, I did a lot of T group and circling. And some of the people from my community had taken trainings from matrix leadership. And this is something that they do in matrix leadership is uh, they call ground, it's called ground of health, which is speak about something positive and speak to, directly to a certain single person. And then I kind of added the, the reflection back to, to add more of that, um, that uh, quality of connection. Um, yeah, I, cool. I just go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know if this is a, a yeah, 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 no, this place is to reflect on the reflection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I, I just wanted to say that I um, 
notice the difference between like Chuck when you were reflecting back to me rather than what I did which was ask questions and like want to continue the story um it's just really really validating and like just really really was an amazing feeling so uh, on reflection um my normal response to people is more questions like I'm always asking questions so that was my first thing to do um but actually just having somebody reflect back to you what you've already said is extremely validating um so yeah thank you cool <clears throat> welcome sharia and afif we're uh, we're practicing dialogic dialogue and we're also kind of you know this discover co-discovering we're inquiring into what what that is as we're doing it and our current format is just check-ins with reflections positive check-ins so chuck go ahead and choose someone okay um, i'll uh, i'll i'll speak to tess here uh hope she likes listening uh, <laughs> um yeah this is yeah. something uh you talked about the highlight of this week or a positive thing this week and this is an unusual for one for me um, a few years ago, a friend of mine in Berlin who makes stringed instruments and is really big into old time music, uh, took me to several old time music events. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but people sit in circles, they're all oral tradition and, uh, somebody starts playing a song and other people join in uh, mostly, uh, you know, guitars and, and, uh, fiddles and banjos and things like that. And it just looked like so much fun that I said, I really want to do that. And he said, great, I'll teach you guitar, which was extremely painful for both of us. <laughs> and he said, oh God, just get a ukulele. It's four strings, four, learn four chords, and you'll be able to participate. And so uh, a couple of years ago, just before COVID, uh, I moved uh, from Iowa to the mountains of Washington and, uh, there was a community uh, contra dance, and the uh, band in the contra dance is usually pretty small, four people, but this was a huge band, like 12, and they had five ukuleles. And so I went up to the ukulele players afterwards. I said, you guys ever get together? And they said, yeah, every Wednesday. So I've been playing in this ukulele group, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm starting. It's very awkward. I'm always looking at my fingers. Am I making the right chord? Are we, you know, and then uh, the last six weeks I was traveling and came back for the first ukulele group in six weeks. And we were in a relatively confined room and there were five of us and the acoustics were fantastic. And we all just played and we played off each other and I didn't have to look at my fingers and we just, we sounded good and we played well together and, and each person in the circle chooses the song and it was a, a very joyful experience. So that's my highlight mm -hmm. of the week. Thank you so much for sharing, Chuck. That sounds so beautiful. What an incredible experience. And I am reflecting on your desire to be in community in this way and through music. And it just sounds like I'm picturing y'all in this little circle. I can't remember if you said if it was a circle or not, but that's kind of, okay. That's kind of what I'm envisioning and just, and what I'm also hearing is your evolution as a, as a musician and going from the guitar to something a little, easier with the ukulele and and just that going from um being really unsure of yourself to more of this comfort and ease and and just being able like talk about joy like just being able to really tap into that joy it sounds really beautiful And I'm going to throw in an, another little Thank nugget you. of inquiry. Um, I think, do you guys notice how the way we reflect, uh, I mean, I don't know you all, but um, the way we reflect uh, reflects upon us and who we are, right? 
so the the quality um like i would guess that tess has has kind of an in, like an inquisitive kind of uh kind of intellectual tone to it but but still with a lot of heart and then claire like she said she there was a lot of like curiosity and openness and um and chuck kind of started with a reflection so um there's this quality of yes, we're asking you to comment, to basically reflect back on something that the person just said, but you're also exposing yourself, you know, like um, in doing that. And there's a, this is a quality that um, I've been, uh, have you guys heard of Ivan Illich? Oh. I was thinking he's, he's one of my favorite, he's, he's my favorite thinker basically. And uh, actually just two days ago, I had a, con a conversation just about Ivan Illich, which is recorded. So let me know, I'm happy to share that uh, with a guy who actually was, you know, like when it was part of a Illich community, but uh, the big one of the biggest things that Ivan Illich taught is this this idea of how what it's like to be French. He, did, he didn't even like the word relationship. He said that computers relate, like humans are friends, and being eye to eye. He used the signal of the the pupil. You know, the reason it's called pupil it stands for pupila, which is puppet. So, because when we're in face of it, when we're uh, when we're um, face to face, then my, who like I'm seeing a version of myself in your eye, but it's not like a mirror which just reflects me back unchanged. It's a picture of me that has been transformed by you, right? So, and that is what friendship means. Like the the decline of friendship is something that Illich would speak about. So, like. There's, I think, in our in our society today, there's really a, a dearth of, of of these moments. So I think there. So I want to point to that intimacy of not just you know um, test, not just reflecting back like what Chuck said, but giving giving back a version of Chuck that only Tess can actually reflect. And that is, in in short, what dialogic dialogue means and other forms like circling the NT group that I've been that I've practiced that are more interpersonal, whereas dialogic dialogue is more about ideas. But like it's the willingness, and not just willingness, but like the the excitement to be changed, to be transformed by contact with the, with each other, which is also friendship. So um, again, any uh, I'll welcome any reflections or thoughts on this and welcome everyone who's joining please welcome if you can join by video for 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 a group devoted to a deep connection it helps to see video <laughs> if at all possible uh, otherwise i'll assume you're just gonna lur you know uh lurking in and, and listening which is totally fine reflections on my last reflection before we move on Yeah, it just sounds really beautiful. I'm really, I'm into it. <laughs> I don't know anything about, I've never heard of. You're in Denver. That. Yeah, so, so they, they actually started the Integral Center. I moved to Boulder for this, for these practices. And now oh, they're wow. in the far cool. between. I still have yeah. lots of friends to do it. Yeah, I'll put you in touch with my friends. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'd love there. to learn more. It's definitely, it's definitely my, my jam. <laughs> cool. I guess that's, that is, uh, we put dialogue in the schedule, right? You kind of wonder who would show up, but it would be, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, people. Um, I, sorry, I would you be able to say, could you say the name again? I thought the that name. was such a beautiful reflection. The name of the, the guy? Ivan Illich. Okay. And I will, yeah, I'll, maybe if everyone, ev how about everyone who wants to stay in touch after this, put your emails in the chat and I'll send a follow-up email. Stuff. Um, and sorry, just to say, I'm kind of walking around because it's late here, so I'm trying to stay awake. So that's no why I'm kind of moving around. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, another thing, sometimes we assume that there's negative impact. So how about instead of saying sorry, you can be like, is there any impact? You know, and we and this gives us an opportunity. This gives me an opportunity to check with myself like, huh? Am I, how much am I impacted by Claire walking around and her background behind her change? I think there's a little perfectionist part of me that maybe would prefer that we all be like one nice still, but I also feel a little guilty that I have this balanced on the arm of it. So I'm kind of like, I think I'm deeply, I'm pretty okay with it. You know? um, just, a, just a small reflection on what you were saying, Mihai. Uh, yeah. like, actually two of them. Uh, big up for Illich. I think he has so many fans in the 
ecoversity space that probably there's a bunch of us who have actually creative learning models and learning architectures based on his reflections and on his his principles so i love that you brought um him into conversation and um just listening to you talk about um how tess um heard chuck um sharing but then she shared back a different version that only she could have shared uh, that made me think like the the visual image that i had was uh, a flow of ideas uh and it's it's a constant flow like it's the circuit of, of of ideas in nature somehow right in which everything we hear everything that happens to us we integrate in a way in which when it comes out of us in any like spoken like either verbally or in other ways of reflection it has a different shape because it has influenced by our own perception and by our own views and feelings on it so just wanted to share cool let thank you let us continue the the check-ins with reflection process so tess it's your turn your turn to choose someone and and share with them yeah i'm happy do you pronounce it the person who just um anna or anna josephson anna hi anna okay she's you um so this it was an interesting uh exercise to even think about like a positive thing for my week and actually i have something that feels a little out of the box for me like on the one hand i could think of like I saw Hamilton for the first, the third time um, on Wednesday, which is really awesome. And not the thing I wanna talk about. Um, the thing I wanna talk about is on Monday, I was really not feeling very well and I still don't really know what it was. Just like not COVID, just weird, little like not feeling great. And, and then the one hand I had it in my head that I was gonna, I'm a big rock climber. Um, and so I was gonna go rock climbing and I was really excited about it. I've really been trying to go every Monday to kind of bring some discipline to my um, rock climbing. And so I literally, I mean, I was like out and about in my car and doing errands and then going to go climbing and, and then ended up making the decision like, no, I don't feel, it doesn't feel right. I don't feel good. And I think I actually just need to go home and take a nap. And that was what I did. And, um, and it was like the right move and that was what my body needed and so i just like listening to my body and not doing the thing even though i really wanted to do it um felt like a win and this is your time to reflect back Anna. okay okay um i missed the thesis so or the <laughs> beginning so i received your story with, um, let's see, one, well, a few things. One, on one level, it was character development, right? I, I have some hints about you now. I, um, you know, it's my job to not get too excited and fill stuff in with, that you haven't actually said. Um, it's also my job to not immediately say, oh yeah, that happened to me too. And oh yeah, I want to talk about that. No, oh right, the, that, you know, not to um, imagine that taking turns telling stories is the same thing as friendship. Um, and then, and then there's the question of feedback around you sharing a choice that you made that felt good to you. Um, I would like language and I would like it to be like easy and normal language where especially one woman can say to another, um, I, I witness and acknowledge that you have got it taken care of. And that's different from saying, good job, you listen to your body. <laughs> and um, and certainly different from saying like, oh, you should push through and do things that feel wrong. <laughs> um, um, 
so the problem with witnessing is that it doesn't generate language. So I'm trying, so then there's this little bit of um, micro crisis around how do you prove that you're witnessing as a good witness? <laughs> That's a little bit. I feel way. witnessed. I feel witnessed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, me, hi, we, we don't hear you. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so much arises in the moment, right? Like this is in the tradition, in the version of dialogue that I'm most familiar with, which is circling. Like there's, there's this kind of like conversation on the surface, and in a lot of in a lot of contexts, we just stay on the surface, right? But there's so many invitations to go deep, right? Mm -hmm. So there's um, like I think something I, I got about Anna as she was sharing is that there was there was a, a a very sweet quality of trying hard. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Is, am I, I, I actually don't no, know. You. I appreciate that. Um, it's but when it's my turn to tell my story, you'll you'll <laughs> wonder right. how to. Do. Totally. You know, we all contain multitudes. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I I that was that's in my in my Facebook profiles. It's a quote from oh. Walt Whitman: "I am large. I contain multitudes." All right. <laughs> um. But yeah, so so there's this um, like I I felt a little sad when when I heard you say like I don't want to get too excited or something or something like oh no, why not? Let's get really excited, right? Because I think one of the one of the ways if the goal is to allow ourselves to be transform to transform and be transformed by the other, right? Mm -hmm. Probably the main way to do that is to actually really be at ease with our emotions and focus on that rather than words mm -hmm. or even when you talked about like yeah it's true like how do you you know uh witnessing is kind of a silent thing right and then you get to talk about it and you kind of break up the witnessing right so so what it is so there's a quality of silence or, you know, rather than speaking 90% of the, of the time that you have, you could just kind of like sit with it and speak 20%. And then the words that come, you know, this is actually a quite council process is another one of the connection games that I used to, they used to lead. Or, um, you know, I hang out with Quakers on Sundays these days, you know, and Quakers are the same thing. You only speak when you're moved by the spirit and um, to speak. So I guess this, this space is an invitation to feelings. It's an invitation to slowness um, and, and that, yeah, I'll pause there for now. This conference as a whole too, the reason I signed up is that I, well, the practical reasons are I'm trying to open a radical school, but the broader philosophical project is to imagine a world with less in it. And that would have to include less talking, of course. Um, and there's some, um, you know, sort of fear of letting go, what would fill the void or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe I should start going to Quaker meetings. So where, where, where are you from? I'm in DC. DC, okay. We're from Washington State, California, Denver, and uh, Sri Lanka. Um, and I'll assume that the people who don't have their video on are just kind of in here as observers and the five of us who have our video on will will be in conversation and uh, and that's totally fine. Um, so much more there and, and we're also so we're kind of like opening up possibilities of going deep like I could totally I would love to talk to you about opening up a school and which is also what I want to do and you know. But um, but let's actually complete the check-in process. And I think everyone has gone except me. So Anna, you're welcome to share with me 
your I address. was just going to ask if a thief, he said something, he said India in the chat, and I was wondering if that was a, um, an indication that maybe he wants to contribute something. I don't know. I am inviting anyone India who wants to be good. Oh, there we go. A thief, yes. So maybe you can share with <laughs> you're down to participate. No, I know. Like, I was hearing like, uh, like we are somewhere from the easy here, there, and Sri Lanka. So okay. I thought like someone from India is also in the call. <laughs> I'm from Kerala, southern part of India. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to participate in our uh, in our check-in circle, Afif? Yeah, but like, uh, what's happening? Like, what I'm supposed to say? Yeah. Hang on, let me admit one more person in. So, um, basically, Anna will share something happy that ha happened to her with you, and it's your you're kind of the primary listener, and then you'll take a few words to reflect back something that impacted you about what she said, and then it'll be cool. your turn to share with the next person, who will probably be me. Okay. All right. Go for it, Anna. So, I'm sharing something happy you said? Uh, something positive that happened to you in the last week. Okay. Um, um, it's such a wild week. Okay, the thing that I had in mind to share is more of a growth moment. Um, and maybe I'll ungrow it and forget it. <laughs> um, okay, this is a week where I share the um, story from Plato's Republic of the Ring of Gyges with my students. Do you know what that is? It's, um, it's basically a story of a shepherd who discovers a ring. And when he puts the ring on and turns the ring around, he can become invisible. And Plato, and so, you know, what do you do if you can be invisible? And Plato's point is that if you're a good person or you're a bad person, you're going to make the same choices. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to let all your friends out of prison. <laughs> and the shepherd goes and seduces the queen and murders the king and becomes king. And he's like, obviously you would do that, right? So I give it, I teach philosophy and creative writing and I give it to both groups. The creative writing kids have to sit with this you know, and some of them are like, yeah, I always think about what I would do if I were invisible, you know, um, and, and the philosophy kids have to decide if that, you know, they have to respond to that too, but so I was with my creative writing group, and they were writing about what they would do with the ring, and I was writing about what I would do with the ring, and, you know, like Plato, I would get millions of people out of prison, number one. Number two, it took me no time. I was like, I would go to Wall Street and wreck shit <laughs> and insider trade. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that's bad slash good, but it's a good cause because it's for me. <laughs> and, you know, of course I'm proving Plato right, which I don't like to do, but... Um, <laughs> But I had this moment of feeling so corrupt and it stayed with me and it's still with me. And I've been struggling creatively and struggling to connect emotionally. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm morally corrupt. So of course, like nothing good's gonna come out of this. Um, but I'm not more morally corrupt than anybody else. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> And Afif, this is your chance to reflect back a little bit. Uh, so uh, what I felt to us, like, okay, so since I, I, I'll say like whatever comes to my mind, so <laughs> please don't punch me back. <laughs> okay, so I felt it like uh, to, uh, it, I felt it like the last five, 10 minutes, like, I mean, I, I, met Anna from another session like 50, one hour back. That's the only time I met Anna in my entire life. <laughs> so, but I felt like last five minutes very brave as in like, so like people uh, support, like telling back or telling that like I felt corrupt. Like uh, this is this is what in going through my mind. And this is like 
what i felt and i don't want to prove plato but still like i felt a little corrupt and obviously obviously so such kind of things i felt like uh I, like i didn't see a lot of people opening up and speaking in a way like especially emotions or inner thoughts like people used to wear mask like everybody used to wear mask because we need to survive before corona it was also like a lot of mask and out of the mask we used to protect inner thoughts especially from public especially from people you didn't so in your entire life or something but i felt uh, really uh, like wow like someone because uh, humans i felt like every no i mean i can't say what everybody but like i am kind of person like it's not white or it's not black like it's gray and also it depends upon the place and situation you are so like people who is in gray and like connect us kind of resonating with it it it, it I, i found really amazing so <laughs> am i making any sense <laughs> so thanks for playing along with me everyone in this in this strange context um what is it i guess like i want to i want to step into another moment of kind of teaching or inquiring into dialogue right so um and there's a couple of things right like i think i think language and culture can sometimes have an impact on how well we receive each other right so i i had more of a hard time following along with the fief right and i was and i was also watching so there so there's there i think there's something of warmth that wanted to be communicated and i and and in my estimation it wasn't quite getting through as much and and i ultimately you're kind of the judge of that and again this is the, the kind of risky communication that can that can go along with truth telling with dialogue right so it's kind of like i'm i think i'm wanting to feel more of a connection between the fifa and anna and my story the story i'm telling myself which may or may not be true is that it didn't quite happen right and sometimes simplicity more silence uh like something like that can help with that now anna can you kind of confirm or or deny my uh, my guess there um well afif as you were talking were you on the line when we were talking about ivan illich which is how i pronounce i never talked out loud about him ever so maybe i'm pronouncing his name wrong ivan yeah ivan because there's also the chekhov play right exactly death, yeah okay uh a few free on the line when we were talking about him uh 5 minutes back no so like uh, yeah i was here we you uh, mihai was talking about um his work on friendship and relationship ha ha ha, ha yeah 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 we got to call about relationships and uh, yeah no. people yeah mm-hmm. what you were saying felt like felt like a continuation of that about um well i heard you say that i was being open with my emotions and that was um an act of friendship beautiful is that yeah and and i guess we're here to the we're here to connect right there's um there's two two like one way to introduce this practice of uh, of circling dialogue is um speak with the intention of connecting and listen for depth right so i think um and i just and i was definitely listening for depth and maybe in ways that i wasn't i was like oh it's there, there's it's still hard for me because i've been trained in some of these things it's hard for me to get over the uh, the rules i think so uh my apologies if you if you fight kind of like push down rules on you but i do want to reflect on how i think you you came in with that connective piece right away 
and then the more you spoke, the more you kind of like, the more I forgot about that, that early part of it. But I think Anna, for Anna, it still really landed, right? So I think in general, speaking, speaking less and speaking more slowly will lead to more connection. I think that's kind of the, the lesson that I've learned from many much time in groups like this. Thank, thank How does that you, feel if you have to receive? Yeah. Yeah, it feel great. Uh, like, because uh, English is something uh, not organic to me. This is not the language I'm thinking. So I'm uh -huh. thinking in a language called Malayalam. And mm. uh, so like, it's like there's a translation going on inside my brain. Uh, so like, it's, it's a normal tendency to like, for me to speak in maybe in little faster. Also, the structure of both language uh, is kind of uh, difficult, I mean, different. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the point you uh, point, I mean, the gift you, uh, the point you mentioned was like, it was something like I I can, what's it, work on or like, I, I liked it. Cool. Uh, I want to experiment with something. Can you can okay. you try, can you try addressing Anna in Malayala a little bit, and let's see how let's let's as an experiment let's see how that lands for her. You're assuming I don't speak it, <laughs> and you're correct. I know you don't speak it. That's, <laughs> this is the experiment. Like, what if there's something that gets communicated? In a sense, like a thief has to like sacrifice something in order to. Oh, I'm actually kind of getting chills as I'm speaking. Like in order to connect with us, like a thief has to sacrifice something, right? He has to speak his non-native language. So this is just an attempt to kind of even it out just a little bit. And we'll like, we'll still pick up something, I'm sure. But let's let's see how it goes. But in every language, Anna is Anna, so it's fine. Anna, Sugamano. Um, that sounded like a greeting. If you can kind of feel the energy in the room, right? Like there's something, there's something positive that just happened when, when that, when a feed got to be more himself, right? So, so those are, um, I do want to introduce kind of these four guidelines that I've used when I've when I've hosted connection games, which is um, open to not knowing zero open to not knowing one practice self leadership Two, return to vulnerable connection and three um, consider group health. And and these are again like they're kind of like person zero like open to not knowing that is like a spiritual practice in and of itself first person practice self leadership how do i honor myself what do i want how do i take responsibility and then to return to vulnerable connection if each of us is practicing self leadership there will be at least a little bit of conflict or at least difference right and there, and this is a constant invitation to return to vulnerable connection. Like, like, hey, what is, what do Afif and I have in common? In the sense that I think that maybe that's that is what I demonstrated, right? Because I felt a little disconnected and I spoke, even if it was maybe a little awkward and blah blah blah. But then <laughs> it all ended up well, right? It's a, there's a I had a, I felt a commitment to feeling more connected to Afif. Um, and then that consider group health, which as a facilitator I do, but in my groups I invite everyone to take part in as well. So there's this like, what group, what what, what would group health like if everyone was felt fully included? Yeah. Cool. So let's um, let's uh, wrap up the circle. And if you, I, I think this is where you get to share something positive that happened in the last week with me. We'll clo we're closing the, the circle. Last week. Okay. Uh, last week, I'm right now living in a city called Bangalore. It's in India. And I'm working with a, an organization called Projectify. So we are into uh, creating self-learning spaces. So 
for our next batch uh like to get to have learners uh, like last four days i went to a community called avalahalli so like in near in outskirts of bangalore they uh, they are not speaking my language they are speaking a language called hindi but uh, with my friends who working with me i went to the community and uh, like visited uh, so many houses uh, like uh, some ng other ngos so many people so i was able to uh, connect with like uh, another part of india which people not speaking my language not living in the way i lived not uh, brought up in the way i brought up not having the childhood or like adulthood i had so it's completely like that four days of outreach with the community was uh, kind of humbling and uh, like kind of witnessing diversity in humans and uh, like seeing like various uh, like people culture language and the way they thinking the way they responding so that was a, a kind of like humbling and very good learning experience especially i am uh, fascinated in human so wherever i go like i i have this passion towards human so that was a very good experience last week thank you afif um my reflection first of all i notice how my my brain will take something that i hear and just run off and kind of separate from the person from the being so i was like oh like i want to go to india like you know like all all these all these like side thoughts so i had to kind of bring myself back to be present and um i really i enjoyed the you kind know, of the rhythm of your speaking i could kind of feel connected to that um and then kind of especially at the end when you said like you're really into humans like that and it's got oh it makes sense that's why that's why you're here but there's that um i guess i'm i'm feeling who you are from the way you speak um and then somehow it matches the there's a sense of care or something like it, like our openness for other people who are not like you So thank you. Um okay so in the in the last few minutes <clears throat> um I would love to talk a little bit about education right and and hold education as if as if education was another person in the room get it <laughs> another dog wants to get through my through my doggy door. Um <clears throat> and maybe especially inviting people who have where it's been a while since they spoke like Tess, Claire and Chuck and maybe invite a, a question like something where you're kind of on the edge of change anyway about how you see education or like what what's a question or a belief that you have around education that's worth kind of feeling into as a group I have a thought but I don't know if it's too um US centric um right. around and I'm also I'm not in education I'm more like tangential to it like I don't know I don't work in a school um but so from my limited understanding it just feels like there is this really big challenge around the teachers unions and how it can really um I don't know exactly how to say it. It just feels like it doesn't feel from what I've heard again limited. It doesn't feel like it's like very student first. And so I just kind of wonder like what's the opportunity to make our particularly US education, I don't know as much about outside of the US, um more student first and like what's the pros and cons and opportunities with especially related to unions. As an offer. Yeah, so the practice of dialogue is we could get more curious about tests and ask them follow up questions so if if someone has is really moved to ask a specific follow up question please do 
or we can also like share ourselves. So it's kind of a weaving of shared reality, right? Like how can we go more deeply into Tessa's world and how can we re reveal with her, uh, reveal to her our own version of that? So I'm gonna invite each of you, whoever feels moved to respond in one of those two ways. Responding uh, directly to your concern, Tess, I do work in a lot of schools and I do not see them being student-centered. They are adult-centered, they're compliance-centered in general. Uh, I do work with a school in Virginia uh, called Springhouse, pretty easy to find, springhouse.org. You're, you're reacting me. I, I've, been, I've, I've been there a bunch of times, yeah. You gotta be kidding me. No. Uh, well, they focus on vitality. It's not just student-centered, but what brings you alive for everyone in order to serve the creation of regenerative culture. So mm -hmm. if you see that model, then it makes what we're doing generally just glaringly obvious. Go ahead, Claire. Um, I think the way that I perceive schools, I've worked, I'm a governor at a school, I've worked in campaigning with schools and all my family are teachers. So I've seen it from lots of different angles. And I talk to different parts of the school community, the kids, the parents, the teachers. Um, and for me, I don't think it should just be, I think it should be child focused in so far as like a school is an ecosystem, right? So you have to be taking care of every bit of it. So if the teachers, I mean, I think the teachers unions, I mean, I don't know about in the US, but in the UK, they're responding to a crisis of burnout um that if that is not kind of attended to then everything else falls apart um but i also agree that it shouldn't just be about you know the teachers and it should be about the kids but i also think it needs to be about the parents um so for me it's it's about seeing all of those things as as kind of equally valuable because if you want to raise a child effectively you know, if you want a child to flourish, you have to make sure that the people who are doing that job are also being nourished and 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 educated and unlearning a lot of their their conceptions about what education should be and could be. And also, you need to be able to give people if, if people are just running on an empty, like they're not going to be doing a good job. So for me, it's like. How we how we taking care of all parts of a school community because it should be a school community and I think that for me is what is lost is that it's not seen as a community it's seen as a factory where loads of um, you know overworked people are just trying to stamp out fires and keep on top of it. All. Sorry, that's my, my I've got a little bit of a political fire and anger about um, the way the teachers are treated in the UK especially but but I see that that um, difficulty so again from a facilitator's perspective I wonder how we can welcome feelings into conversations that are more about ideas such as education teachers unions right so I think there's um there's a default way to hold conversations which excludes them completely right Say so I actually assume that there's some feeling of frustration or something like that with your tests, right? Like, and and again, I'm I'm inquiring into what dialogic dialogue is, right? But I think in order for us to be changed by each other's knowledge, right? Like, there's probably a way where I can go back to like remembering what it was like to work in the public school, which is a while ago for me. But I'm just like, oh yeah, it seems like. We only get the best and the worst of teachers in public schools. And it's fucking like teachers unions that allow you after you've worked for two years to basically have job security where you can just suck at your job, right? Is that kind of what your, your and I'm curious what your personal experience is, Tess, that kind of made you care about asking that question? Yeah, it's, it's more, it is a curiosity more than anything else or more just like, 
again, being kind of a little bit more on the sidelines of education in school systems. Like I do, I'm a consultant related to workforce, youth workforce. So like getting young people, helping to prepare them for the world of work. And so I actually am doing some work now with Denver Public Schools, but for their college and career success team. Um, so it's more just like uh, just thinking about the whole ecosystem and just so many things, articles I've read, conversations I've had with people over the years. It just feels like a meaty topic that I certainly don't know what's like the solution here. Um, but it does seem like, again, at least from what I've heard in the States, it feels like it is a significant challenge and there's, it's, there's lots of opportunities for improvement, I think. And I really heard Claire, what you were saying, as far as like how to protect, like thinking about even just like the, the background of union, why unions, right? Like why are unions created in order to support people that are, that are in challenging circumstances. So yeah, I hear, I really, I really did hear what you were saying. Yeah. I need to take my leave. Thank you all. Well, so hopefully Thank see you in session, sessions tomorrow. Jack. Bye bye. Bye. Bye chat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We are at the end of our time, but we're also kind of welcome to linger for a few more minutes. So. You guys are welcome to. I'm I'm really enjoying meeting all of you. Uh, this feels like a gift to me. As I've been like buried in just code, you know, like programming for, again for the first time in two years. So it's like so nice to talk to humans about things that actually that actually matter, you know. Yeah. Hey, will you send us any like article? Again, this is my first yeah, time yeah. digging into this whole concept. So I would be super curious of like a book or a whatever something to, to totally. kind of so, um yeah i think it, uh, i'll i'll name it well i'd rather practice and i'll just send you some links but yeah um oh, great there's also i have a, my spiritual director wrote a book called the new monasticism and that's where i actually learned specifically about the dialogic dialogue concept so he his mentor was father thomas keating i don't know if you guys have heard of him so he was a he was an interspiritual guy, and he uh, he ran a monastery, no mass in Colorado, and he would host once a year leaders from all all different religions, and they would just hang out as friends and practice dialogic dialogue. And only one of the thirty years that they met, they tried to actually put out some some information on what they talked about, and they're like, "Nah, that just kind of impacts us. We'll just keep it to ourselves, basically." Mm -hmm. But it was it was this very um, um, this is very rich experience. So now, so he wrote the 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 new monasticism. Um, so the manifesto is available as a PDF somewhere, and then uh, there's also a book. Uh, by Rory McEntee and, uh, and his and his co-author. So so when I heard that when I learned about this, it was like, oh, it's basically just like circling, but we're circling, we focus on human beings and our relationships. Dialogic dialogue sort of so like uses that same openness and open-heartedness to to discuss ideas. And I've actually um if you guys are into this, I I held, I hosted conversations for about six months. Dan and Dan, Dan Rudolph and I actually hosted, uh, co-hosted for every Monday, practicing dialogue to dialogue on different aspects of education, like education and spirituality, education and healing, education and systems thinking, education and the Native Indian, Native American Indian residential schools, uh, and we have videos of all this stuff. Um, so I want, I would love to, I will send you the email and I'll point you to the, uh, to that website where you can watch them. And, and one of, yeah, there's a lot more there. Yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask it if, if this kind of thing, this tool has been, I'm, I'm sure maybe it has in some context, but it has been used to like have conversations about race between, you know, different, different races and what you said about the different religions, but whether it's, used in moments of conflict yeah I, so a lot of the people in my community are basically mediators or things you know but i've been wanting i've actually been wanting to have a conversation about vaccines or things that people really disagree on you know and actually go in um 
like I have friends who are, I have friends who are like on the opposite spectrums and I like and all each of them I connect to all of them but it seems that there's there's an unwillingness to be changed right um, I guess another book that that is amazing for me is uh, this is the one education book I would I would recommend that people start with uh, especially for people who are into spirituality which is uh, to know as we are known um, by Parker Palmer who is a, a Quaker educator. So he speaks there about having a community of truth. Uh, he talks about wanting to have more prayerfulness in schools, but not necessarily more prayer. You know? And um, But the community of truth to him is this idea of, I have, truth is not individual, truth is not personal, and truth is not communal. Truth sits in between the personal and the communal, where like I like we each bring we each get better at bringing our own personal truth, and we share it in a hospitable environment, right in a place where where it's welcome and nourished and it feels good to share, and even when it clashes, like there's ways to to handle that basically, and we arrive at some kind of deeper form of truth that is you know and that that's what a community of truth means to him. Again, it's still kind of a new idea to me, but. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really interested in the kind of psychology of that because um, as soon as somebody talks about something political, I can feel my body. Like, so when you ask the questions about unions, like I can feel my body like, I'm automatically, no matter what anybody says, I'm automatically angry and defensive because that's my position um, all the time against government or whatever. Um, and so it's like yeah, I'm not even listening to what the person said. All I all I hear is like union or you know some political issue, and already I'm like, you know, I've got my guard up. So my ability to listen is is like thwarted. <laughs> so I'm very interested in that. Totally, and it's not. It's a uh, everything is connected. This is why I was. Um, before I got distracted by a, by a spiritual journey two years ago, I was working on building some, uh, you know, a business called One Connected Life, where I was like, okay, we'll do all the things, like I, I used to do productivity coaching and these connection games and energy healing work and, you know, and education. And, and it's actually kind of the same, right? Like you can't, you can't, I can't be open to another human being unless I've done some of my shadow work, right? And, unless I met like the less I'm, if I met, if I didn't meditate that morning, I'll be crankier and I'll be much more likely to get into conflict with someone, you know? So it's, it's all connected, I think. And it, the maps are important as well, like learning, but there's just the practice, you know? Um, what else is alive for you guys before we move on? Um, maybe we'll close with an appreciation for each person. So this is what I like to do is we'll put the focus on one person and let just let the group, let one, per, one other person speak on behalf of a group, but something they appreciate about them. You guys want to play that with me? Let's, um, let's have someone appreciate Tess. And there you go, because I've spoken too much. I have, I have all. Can we all go for appreciate? It. Okay. <laughs> okay, Anna, you go first, and I'll, I'll follow. Okay. Um, you guys can both go. I really noticed a sense of earnestness in Tess. The first paragraph she spoke, and then also with her union uh, question. Speak to her. Speak to her right. directly. Tess, I noticed. Um, Yes, the union question and the, the question of how do we ask anything at all critical in this very fraught time. It's bold, but it also speaks to a earnestness or a commitment um, to your curiosity and um, a um, 
desire to weed whack in community <laughs> that I appreciate. <laughs> thank you. Great, and thank you is the answer. Great. Let's, uh, who would like to appreciate Anna? Oh, well, Claire, well, 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 Claire you, you can go, Claire, you can go, as long as you make it, let's make it a little bit. Okay, all right. No, yeah, just, sure. just the, uh, us, the yeah. same as what Anna said, but just really um, uh, humble and a kind of like pure and open spirit and like where I was getting like <laughs> politics, you, you just met me with a kind of a softness and, a, and an openness, which prompted me um, to kind of go back to that that space, which is really lovely. Thank um, you. And I could just say, Anna, we were just kind of talking. Um, and I was really like, uh, I loved hearing you talk about the, the Plato and giving your two classes um, the different stories. I think what I just felt was that uh, you're quite magical and intelligent, and I'd like to be in one of your classes. <laughs> yeah, you have a kind of magical, I don't know, like energy about you, like some sort of fairy, but also very intellectual and so very nice mix of energies. Thank you. And and by the way, Claire, um again in the little teaching moment when you spoke to Tess I'm not sure that she had a chance to say thank you and to kind of close the energetic loop with you so um thank you thank you Claire I appreciated it there we go um and I have I have something with Anna too it's just like I just um there's so much goodness when you're around and there's I think that there's a there's something in me that's kind of cynical, even as I, you know, work towards the best, but having you in a group brings like a necessary amount of, of kind of um, almost like positive naivete is what I would say. Like there's like the world can be better. There's hope when you're around. Thank you. I did say that I would insider trade. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's actually one of the things when I'll send you the, the follow up, there's something in there about, um, about, um, teacherly authority and how, and with one of my mentors, I talk about through, like, if you're not like consumed by this conflict of, I want something better for the world. And yet I want the world to, to, to be self-determined. If you're not consumed by that conflict, you're not really a teacher. So, oh man, then I am really a teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um something some, an appreciation for a fief please i can share a fief i appreciated you sharing your vulnerability about the difference of of communicating with us in english and not being your your primary language so thank you i can share oh go ahead sorry no go ahead anna if a few wanted to thank Tess, then I. Nice. I was on mute to say thank you. Tess and like, welcome to Kerala anytime. <laughs> Since you love Kerala. Um, you are pink. And, and we, should, we should wrap up in the, in, in the next few minutes. So go ahead, Anna. Go ahead. Afif, I. Um, I appreciated when Mihai named your quality of care because that really, really came across to me too. Um, and your sunny disposition, it seems like that's a big projection graphs, but it does seem like you, I mean, you said you love humanity or humans and it comes across in a, energizing way. Thank you, Anna. Cool. Uh, let's appreciate uh, Claire, right? Claire, your um, 
your reaction to Tess, I felt, um, um, well, I loved your, um, your clear passion and your clarity and also the journey that you had <laughs> privately and then shared about, it, I thought it was wonderful the way it was and then you second guessed it and, or, you know, developed it at least. And the whole thing was um, fun to watch, but also so familiar and recognizable and relatable um, that I appreciated it partly as a mirror <laughs> um, of, you know, a day in the life of a passionate person. <laughs> Thank you. And Claire, I totally want to be friends and talk to you more. Like it, there's just instantly with a with a nomad part. Like there, there's such a yeah. Like I, I mean, I'm excited to get to know you. It feels like I would love talk. that. I would love that. Yeah, probably with all of us actually. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, okay. And I think I'm the only one who's left. can go. I, Mihai, I really appreciated your clearly very skilled role as facilitator. And I could tell you took it really seriously of kind of holding the container in the space and this kind of um, combination of like letting it flow. Like I was pretty surprised that we spent basically most of the time just doing our little check-ins. Like I'm not sure if that was the intention or not, but um, yeah, I just think you're really skilled facilitator and appreciate you creating this space for us today. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, there was just one moment that like really, really stood out to me that I thought was really beautiful. Um, and it was when you, when you talked about a thief um, uh, and the, the kind of language barrier and the cultural barrier and a part of me was going, oh no, don't, don't talk about that. Um, but you, but you lent into it, and then it was amazing because I, I felt a thief come alive, and I felt like you, you said something. You said uh, commitment to connecting with a thief, and I thought it was just like deeply respectful because I think so many people, especially English, like if English is your first language, we're so dismissive. Not we maybe I or, or one can be so dismissive of people when their English isn't perfect or whatever, because that's the expectation. Um, and so the, the patience and the leaning into that meant that you allowed us to see a thief's like true character, which is a very beautiful character. And I think I, I switched off in the, in the first moment. And then when he was unable to, to speak again, I felt a real deep connection to him. Um, and you facilitated that. And I just thought it was really beautifully done. Um, you lent into tension, but also deeply respectful. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for enabling that. And that's just one moment that kind of captures what, what the energy that you bring. Thank you. And, and this is, I should just stop at thank you, but that was the, the reflection thing, the Ivan Illich reflection thing just happened to me where you gave me back to myself in a way that I hadn't seen before. So I appreciate it. Cool. Um, Mihai, I feel um, a lot of curiosity about your journey and knowledge. Um, and, um, and <laughs> admiration for, uh, what I could only describe as your calm vibe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, um, uh, I'm, um, 
really interested in how other people balance this sort of um well what i call the inhale and the exhale how do you read and how do you use what you've read or how do you in you know inhale some culture and then express that culture in a reflective way of you and i in your case i'm my sense is that you're very hard working at it and i definitely would learn from more details about that. But I'm feeling appreciative of you coming here and bringing yourself as inspiration. Thank you so much, everyone. We are complete. I will send a follow-up email. Uh, also, we're doing we're doing the same the same thing tomorrow at the same time. So I'll be leading, I'll be leading again. I would love to have um one of you or all of you there and and just to drop in this nugget i've been kind of wanting to lead connection games again and uh possibly like mondays five to seven pacific or something like that on zoom you know as well as local stuff so um if uh, let me know if you're if that's something you might be into um but i would love to play with you all again um.